I had a feeling that I might be coming on by myself today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm back. But, you know, you feel like you have to start like this, right? Right, right. Hey, welcome right. back to a Thursday episode of the Penalty Box Live. We have special guests on today. Well, they're all special. So, so we have a great guest on today. And uh, shout out to the Woodstock Inn and Brewery. You were just there like last week, right? I was. Did a little photo shoot. Uh, of course, I had to do some taste testing. Hey, um, a, a side note before we get going on, on you know, uh, do you know, you see that meme that's going around with uh, with Bernie? Yes. Have you seen that? All right. So we did that in about 20 minutes. We pulled one together for the Woodstock Inn, had him sitting outside in a chair. They posted it. <laughs> 1,200 likes like wow. that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I've yeah. seen it. What what just fun, right? That Bernie yeah. Sanders shows up at this major, obviously, historical event, and he just <laughs> – now everyone's using them. Uh, I saw some bubbles. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure Wes will comment over here in the private chat and let us know when Evan Carmichael is on. But today's guest is um, the incredible uh, Evan Carmichael, uh, author of, of you know several books. Evan is here, so let's Evan. Evan, before we get to you, we always do a couple of shots on goal, and we'll mm -hmm. make it quick today. And I'm going to go ahead and go first, but I'm going to. You know what? Philip Rivers just retired. Now he's yep. retiring from um, from uh, the Colts. He is not a Hall of Fame quarterback. No, he's got a lot. He's got great numbers, but he he was never an MVP. He never went to a Super Bowl. Never won a Super Bowl. Obviously, he's not a Hall of Fame quarterback. He's got all the numbers, but that's longevity, right? Yeah. Now there is something to be said for longevity, but but I just I I don't. And if we look up. 10 years from now, I don't know how long, what is it, five years before they can be voted into the Hall of Fame. Some, yeah. It's not like the NFL is going to all of a sudden turn into a run-happy league. Right. You know, His numbers are going to be, be obscured. He's top five or six in passing yards and passing touchdowns. And a great quarterback, but not every quarterback is a Hall of Fame quarterback. No doubt. No doubt. I think that he's got the stats, but he'll be, he won't be first ballot for sure. No. No, he'll he'll get in, but that that'll be a good class coming out at cool. the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. do you have a, a shot on gold for? Yeah, I've got a real quick one. So, a couple of episodes ago, I talked about the best Christmas gift I got was that my niece was uh, uh, her her mom had passed away, and I've been taking care of her since she was sixteen. Officially, her name change came through uh, overnight, and so her last name is mine, and I'm very proud of her. Uh, and I wanted to yeah. shout out to her. And last shot on goal is I want to wish our new president and vice president the best of luck. And uh, I think it's, uh, you know, time for a change and we move on and we we do good. They're not going to define my year and we'll just keep going. Yeah, I think uh, I agree with that. I saw some people on Facebook today kind of, you know, literally someone said I'm rooting for him to fail. And I just like, you know, the page is turned and you you, you have to root for leadership to yep. do well. I just I I just don't get that mentality. And and. That's a whole nother probably sure. um, you know, story. That's, but, a, that's, uh, a, that's a different but, political joke. Yeah. Our guest today, uh, you know, Wes, if you want to bring Evan in, let's get Evan on here. Evan is uh, – hey, Evan. Hey, hey, there he is. What's up, guys? Eric, Tim, good to be here, man. Good you guys see doing you. good? Doing, I, I want I, – well, before – I got lots of questions. and we're like Lots of questions. I'm excited wow. to have you on. But um, I have to tell you, I, I my daughter, I, she's eight, going to be nine, and I said – so check this out. This guy's going to be on our show. He's got, you know, 3 million followers, you know, 3 million subscribers on YouTube. And she said, see people with a hundred million. <laughs> so she just blew you off. She just didn't even care, man. I love it. I, I, mean, I got to make, make a bigger impact. Can you dance like uh, what that, that girl on TikTok, um, Carly something rather. Carly D'Amelio. D'Amelio. Right, right. D'Amelio. I can't dance like that. Evan, can you? Uh, I own a salsa dancing studio here in Toronto. It's how I met my wife. So yeah, uh, salsa dancing I can I can play in. Other kind of choreo, not so much. No. Cool. All right. I I wanted to kick this off with asking you. Um, for me, last year I, I kind of like to stick with a little bit of a theme throughout the year as things. And last year for me was a lot about adapt and adjust, adapt and adjust, and adapt and adjust. This year I've, I've I'm give, grow, and gratitude. And if I follow those three things, I think a lot of really good things happen in my life and happen for my family and happen for my friends. And I know with you, it's, it's believe, right? And do you, and when I listen to a lot of what you talk about and I hear a lot of what you talk about, it's believe. And then there always seems to be a lot of effort behind that. Can you talk about that? Yeah. I think when you find out what your most important core value is, you end up being called to service. You know, I think everybody here, 
wants to feel like the work you do matters, that it's meaningful, that it's helping other people, right? You guys got your show, it's great. And, and yes, there's jokes and entertainment and fun, but also you want people to, to feel inspired or have learned something new. It's not just you know a waste of time to tune in, right? You wanna feel like you're waking up every day and you, you're doing something that matters. Uh, right. Even how you handled the last political comment of, hey, this is not what this is not what we believe is not what we stand for. If one person hears that and then decides not to go march in the Capitol because they heard Tim say that, right? Like that's impact. Uh, yeah. And so I think it's a, a matter of figuring out what is it that you stand for and then how can you spread more of that to the world? Yeah. Yeah. Um, who's your favorite Blue Jay baseball player all time? All time is Kelly Gruber. Uh, really? Third baseman. Yeah. I mean, so the Jays, I used to be, I'm much more into esports than I am to traditional sports now, but, but Blue Jays were my, were my team growing up and, and I mean, we just signed Springer. So that's going to be a super interesting, uh, season to watch, but Gruber, uh, 88 week they came here, right? I was eight years old, super impressionable kind of time. I went to the season opening with my dad We took the streetcar there. So it was like, I didn't even know baseball, but it was just a fun thing to do with my dad. And I kind of got hooked. Um, I don't know why I like Gruber, uh, 92, 93, we won the world series. So also kind right. of impressionable age. I'm 12, 13, blue yeah. Jimmy hype. You get into it. I was doing baseball cards, all that stuff. Um, my goal was to be a, a blue Jay during the season and a police officer in the off season. That, that's what I, <laughs> my, my, my 10 year old <laughs> self thought, cause Hey, you don't play all season. So what do you do in the off season? Well, I'll be a police officer. Why not? Right. Um, I don't know what it was about Gruber. Uh, he wasn't even really, I think maybe he was our best player one season, but once we were right. winning, he won, he won. I don't know if he was in both series, but he won at least the first one with us. Um, but that's when we had Alomar, we had Carter, we had Olerud, we had Winfield, yeah. Molitor and Cone and like all these guys. So Gruber wasn't the star, but I don't know, just something about him. Maybe the work, the work ethic, the hustle, the like chase down every play that just made me gravitate to him. I've, I've never been to Toronto to the stadium, I, I, but I saw a picture of you from a few years back with your wife, I think, and you were at Fenway Park. And obviously, Tim and I have both been there and there's so much history and and um what does Toronto compare? Is it even comparable from that standpoint of just the quaintness and the, and the history of it all or, or no, or is it, is it doesn't matter to you because you're a Toronto fan? Well, I mean, it's hard to compare any stadium to Fenway, you know, yeah. Fenway is a, Fenway is a pretty special place. Um, uh, our stadium is okay. I think it was, it's a little dated. It was the first retractable roof. So right. that was a thing at the time, like, Oh my God, retractable roof. Partly because yeah. it's so cold here in Toronto, you know, it's nice to have indoor heating <laughs> yeah. right. during yeah. the season. Because uh, our first stadium was Exhibition Stadium, and and you know they were playing through snow, you know, so you don't have to you don't have to worry about that in South Florida, but we got to worry about that up here. Um, yeah. Definitely not the history. Uh, baseball is also relatively new in Canada, and, and Toronto is the only team now. I mean, we had the Expos that went, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think I can compare anything to. Fenway Park. It's a it's a pretty special place. I've yeah. been to Boston a few times. That was my first time. I'd always kind of wished I had gone to the stadium. And yeah, so I made some extra time this time to just book the tour and go through and take pictures, and it was fun. Yeah, the tour is absolutely incredible, and it? it's just cool to see it all. And if you're a baseball fan, and soak it all in. I mean, I'm a baseball fan, but uh, um, I, I, Tim, I've been doing all the talking. I know you got well, some right. stuff. You know, uh, Evan, I'm literally 35 miles north of Boston, so you know we get in there quite quite often. But if uh, here's an open invitation: if you ever make it to New Hampshire, uh, the Double A affiliate of the Blue Jays is right here in Manchester, New Hampshire, and I will buy you a beer and a hot dog. So all right, all right. Um, I did have a business question going through some of your stuff and uh, a lot of people that are listening to this show are smaller business uh, owners. Uh, they're uh, a sole entrepreneurs. They're uh, entrepreneurs that are making their own way through uh, an, um, a company, but in their own territory. If you could give any salesperson out there or marketer um, some advice of what's the best content a to put out right now and B are they talk should they be talking about their own brand like Evan Carmichael or Tim Lord or Eric Bam, or should they be talking about the brand that they work for? I think the best thing you can do is actually show you helping solve client problems. I think that's the number one piece of content. Um, so many people are just posting one. They're posting, look how much money I made doing this. You can too. go sign up for my X, Y, Z program or right. just, or just talking heads where they're, they're pulling up their phone and, and trying to talk a message into the camera. 
Um, it takes skill to do that really well. A lot of people think it's easy and then they get in front of the camera and it's, it's a lot harder than, than, it, than it looks. But if you've already had success uh, in selling to your customers, you're great at having a conversation. Right. And people are almost always better when they're in front of somebody than if they're just talking to a camera. And so show me you doing that. Whatever you want to make money doing, show me the process of you doing it. So for example, um, you know, if you're a, a mortgage broker, most people hate mortgage brokers. You know, like you don't want to, you don't want to talk to your mortgage broker. It's like the last thing you, you want to do is a million of them out there. What's the difference between one mortgage broker and another one? Well, you could be the mortgage broker who actually cares and you can show me what I would love to see is somebody comes to you and wants to get a mortgage and you break down the process of what you look for and you do it in your style, caring, empathetic, like whatever is part of you know, your brand. Uh, and that's the goal is do you, you demystify this complex thing that a lot of people think about and you become the go-to person. Now, they have to agree to be public. And so the way to do it is if they're, if they're being coached for free, then it's public where they may not ever have access to you. If it's being paid, then it's private. Like if it's going to be an actual client of yours and it's going to be private and not be online. But you're, you're basically coaching people through the problems that they're facing in their life and how you can solve it. It's a way to promote what you're doing without promoting what you're doing because you're just, you're just so good in demonstrating. Yeah. If you can't do that, if you're like, okay, I can't get anybody to come on with me, then, then pretend you're talking to a customer. Like what are the top questions that your customers are facing and then how can you solve it for them? So don't make it a sales pitch. Your goal with content online is to be seen as the go-to expert for this thing. You know, if, if um, somebody was the expert on the Boston Red Sox, and I was coming to Boston, maybe I want to go on a tour with that guy, right? There, <laughs> I'm picking the right team for you too, right? So if I'm going to go on a tour with somebody through the, through the stadium, uh, obviously now they have their, you have to be with Boston, but just as a theoretical example, the guy who's showing his love for Boston and answering people's questions and knows all the players and can name every lineup since 1922 or whatever, right? Uh, that's the guy that I would want to learn from because... I have a connection, even though he doesn't know who I am, if I've seen some of his content, I know who he is. I want the guy like with you guys, with what's in the background. I want the guy who's wearing the hat. I want the guy who's having the players behind him on the wall. Like I want that guy to be the guy that I go with who's got so much Boston pride. When I did the tour, you can tell the people who were doing the tour, it wasn't just a job. Right. Like they love the, the Red Sox. They love the stadium. They love the history. They love Ted Williams' seat in right field. Like, Yep. They love it. And you ask them any question and they, they have the most sophisticated answers to the most you know, like obscure questions. That's the thing right. about Boston Red Sox fans, but especially the people who are doing the tours. And so that's who you want to hang out with. And chances are people listening, entrepreneurs, you're like that for your own business. You may not care about the Red Sox, but you care a lot about X, Y, Z. And it's showing off that passion, that commitment, that knowledge, that care, because that's how you win as an entrepreneur. Why should I hire you instead of some big company? Why should I go with your mortgage brokerage instead of somebody else? When you're selling a commodity service like that, it's the relationship. Yeah. I feel like you treat me like I'm a human, that you actually care deeply about this industry. And so I want to work with you because I know your story and the content you put up instead of some big brand that I've never, that I heard of, but I'm going to be treated like a number. Sure. And yeah, that's, I'm, I'm, go ahead. Sorry. That's worked for you and your business. I can tell. I'm currently listening to uh, Eat Your Lunch by Anthony. I can never pronounce his last name right. Irano. I, I can't pronounce it right. I apologize. But he talks about in business, if all things are equal, it comes down to relationship. And if all things are unequal, it comes down to relationship. And along the lines of that kind of you talking about that led me into uh, we had Adrian Salisbury on last week with Eat, who's Ecamm specialist. And, and he talked about your vibe attracts your tribe. And I, that kind of leads me into my question of how many times do you see people that have YouTube content that try to be someone else? Um, often. And I don't think that's a bad thing at the beginning. I think it just makes you at best an Elvis impersonator. Right. You know, but I think at the start it's, it's not bad. You know, like if you're, if you're picking up the bat for the first time, maybe you should, maybe you should try George Springer's swing. Right. Maybe you should try Griffey's swing. Maybe you should try 
who we got to get some Yank, uh, some not Yankees, some Red Sox. Maybe we got to try Manny Ramirez swing, David right? David Ortiz Manny, swing. But like, David if you tried, you know, Manny Ramirez swing was not Ted Williams swing. Right. The approach, the leg kick, the angle, like it's all different. Is is one better than the other? I mean, who knows? Yes, I guess. Arguably, you don't have to debate who the greater player is, but you could your swing is probably being between those two. Like your best swing is not going to be exactly Williams and or exactly Ramirez. It's going to be some mishmash of trying all these other people's swings on. And so right. uh, same thing um, when you're trying to figure out your style for creating content. Even you guys, you make this show. Chances are at the beginning, you had no idea what you're doing. So let's go look at what ESPN is doing and let's go look at what all these other people are doing and, and take some formats and take some styles and some of them will fit and some of them won't. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get at figuring out what you guys are going to do. Um, right. So I love modeling success at the beginning. It just, if you do it consistently enough, you, you recognize that you're taking different pieces from different people to help you be the best you, not to be the next anybody else. Gotcha. Makes sense. Timmy? Yeah, so uh, there's a number of really impressive people on the wall behind you. Um, and, you know, I've been watching a lot of your videos. And, uh, I mean, you, you know, interviewed the who's who, the, the Tony Robbins is, the Mel Robbins, on and on and on. Is there someone that you have yet to interview, that one that has got away, the Gordon Ramsay, if you will, of, uh, of uh, that show, that, you know, uh, all the hot ones, that they were trying to get Gordon Ramsay forever. Uh, is there someone that you uh, really want to interview that you haven't been able to land yet? I'm not aggressively pushing after people, um, but the the two that I would love to have on, one is Kanye West. He's on the wall here behind me because yep. I think most people, when they interview him, are looking for the gotcha moments. Like they're looking to to trap him and, and he'll often take the bait. And so <laughs> it turns into some crazy internet drama. Um but he's a genius and I would love to get some of his entrepreneurial ideas out there. And I think it's a shame that he hasn't done more interviews um, with people because he does fall into those traps so much. But there's a, I think there's a lot you could pull out of wisdom. Uh, and the other one would be Bill Gates. I haven't met him yet, but learning from his story is the thing that saved my company, my very first company. And why I even do all of this stuff, the, the, the idea of modeling success, because I had a software company and I, and I quit on it. And I, I came back to it and I said, I can't be the first one to have done this. Let me model success. Who's done it? Bill Gates, Microsoft, that blows up my company. So even though I've never met him, uh, his story, his strategy saved my company and then gave birth to everything I'm doing now. So really just to say thank you. And I don't know that I even have a question for him, but just to <laughs> give him the, uh, the recognition, I guess, for having an impact on me. Well, that's great. That's great. I, I want to ask you about... Gary Vaynerchuk, and there seems to be just a lot of similarities between you guys as far as kind of the the message that you preach. And um, you feel like we were talking before you got on the show, before we show started about being a connector, and and you feel like just the, uh, this natural connector of you you take all this info and you put it out there because you, you're you're a self described introvert, but yet you want to you want to help and you want to give, and and so Gary Vita, I noticed on your Instagram, you post three, four times a day. Right. And I feel like social media is a moving parade, so to speak. Can you talk about any of those like basics? You should do this every day. Uh, by the way, I, re I read one person said Gary V is a poor man's Evan Carmichael. Wow. Oh. Well, I, I'll uh, thank you. There's a lot of stuff, but if you want to unpack all that. Um, yeah. I think, I think it starts with you being able to tell your story. I think it starts with understanding where you came from and why this is so important to you. Because until I understand why, you haven't hooked me on the how. For a lot of people creating content, you're trying to teach, you're trying to educate, you're trying to tell them how to do something. But until they get that you actually came from where they came from, they don't want to listen to you. It's like, oh, easy for you to say, you're all the way over there, you know, and you don't know what I've been through. Meanwhile, you probably do. And, and maybe you went through worse. So sharing your story, um, definitely. And then I think the easiest blanket statement is make the content for who you used to be so think back to however old you were was the, the hardest point in your life for me it's 19 year old evan when i wanted to quit on my business but think back to your life uh you can touch that person in a way that evan carmichael can't and gary v can't and tony robbins can't and none of these people can you could touch them because you used to be that person right and the person you are now 
is impossible compared to who you used to be. If you think back to who you were at 25 and you look at where you're at now, it's like, I would never become that person. Like, that's not possible. And then here you, here you are doing it. And so that's, that's your job is to create content for the younger version of you and then recognize that there are millions of people who currently right now are the younger version of you. Right. And, and they don't think it's possible. And you're here to say, no, it is. You can. I've done it. Let me show you how. Yeah. That's you cool. know, I was thinking and reading uh, your story. Um, what do you think your life would be like other than uh, incredibly rich or uh, er, uh, if you had landed that $40 million deal instead of, uh, you know, uh, procrastinating on uh, on getting the proposal absolutely perfect? He's done his homework. He's done his homework. Uh, yeah, I was 22. I lost a $40 million deal. Um, I don't know. I spend zero time thinking about it. Good. That's it. Like literally zero time. I'm, I'm worried about what am I doing right now? Um, I don't, I don't worry about all of the, the pitches that I could have swung at and, and missed or took a walk instead of going for the home run. I mean, it's, it's done. I'm grateful for where I'm at. I'm happy to be here talking to you guys. Like if I make that deal, I'd probably never talk to you guys. And and you know, that I guess that's kind of where I want. I was thinking. I wasn't thinking it as a negative. He's right now, this moment, regretting not making that <laughs> exactly. deal. <right? laughs> what? I wasn't thinking it as a negative. I was thinking it as more of a positive. Meaning, all the people's lives you've touched because you didn't land that deal is yeah. is probably an incredible blessing. That's what I, I was. What, thinking. what that made me do was I, I call myself a recovering perfectionist because of that deal, and so I use the sting of that deal to then push me into the things that I'm afraid to do. You know, Tony Robbins came on the channel last week. We did a, we did a half an hour interview and it's the second time he's been on, but uh, you know, I was nervous and scared still going into that one. And I, I want to not have regrets in my life. So if I'm going to say yes and let's go and let's push towards it instead of trying to be perfect. Um, that's how I use that event. I don't, I don't really think about it too much now and unless people bring it up, but it was never, Oh my God, I wish I did that. And my life would be totally different and I would be living on, you know, I don't know. I just don't think backwards. Right. Well that I have this written down. Cause I like to ask this question a lot. It kind of leads into that. Uh, what are, what are you insecure about? Disappointing people. You know, my, my greatest fear is disappointing people. Um, even as we started this show, I'm on, I'm in the waiting room. Um, you're like, is Evan here? Like, I'm here. I'm here, guys. Like, are we starting? You know, did, did, did they know I'm here? I hope they know I'm here. Yeah, and we then, saw it. And then I hear you guys talking sports and like, oh my God, if we're talking esports, I can go deep, but traditional sports, I'm actually super out of touch. That football player you were talking about, I didn't even know who he was. Philip something. So <laughs> I'm looking him up like in the, in the backstage. It's like, who is, what sport does this guy play? Who is this guy? Uh, and I looked it up and then I remembered the Jays just signed somebody Springer. So I looked that up just to have I was like, is this a sports show that we're only talking? Sp Great. Let's go. <laughs> I That's can, hilarious. You want to talk about 92 blue Jays? I'm down. You know, you want to try to name the whole roster. Um, so, I mean, it's like, it's a, um, I mean, obviously you guys brought me on for a reason. I, I doubt you're going to bring me on just to talk about American football, you know, 2022 rosters and all this stuff. But, um, that's the, I'm just, I'm worried about disappointing people. I don't want to show up and, and give you a bad show, right? It's not about me. Like, I don't want you guys to feel like, oh, that was a waste of an episode or people comment and they don't like it. And that hurts whatever you're doing. Um, but what I've learned to do is not let that be the reason for not doing it. Like, that's not a good enough reason. The fact that I might fail or might flub or might be embarrassed that I don't know who this football player is that, that might be a hall of famer. <laughs> He's not. He's not. He's not. <laughs> that's not a good enough reason for me not to say yes and show up right and so it's uh right. and that's today like i'm not giving you an example from when i was 20 right that was today 20 minutes ago um yeah so it's a constant thing that i battle and i think i think that's normal i think that's good i think if you don't have anything in your calendar that you're nervous about then i don't think you like your life i think you're just photocopying the same day over and over and over and over again and you slowly hate your life. There should be some things that, that give you a little bit of anxiety or nerves that are coming up. That means you're growing and learning and getting better. Um, yeah. So I actually like the offbeat stuff. Like for shows, when my assistant's booking me on shows, I like the weird stuff. We're going to mix sports and business. I don't know. Great. <laughs> Let's try. Let's go and see what happens. Um, 
because I like the push and I like the challenge. Gotcha. Hey, Wes, will you throw up that link that I sent you earlier? Because I wanted to ask Evan about this if if he can throw. There we there we go. With oh, nice. Two questions. Um, number one, with that head of hair, did you ever think about being in a boy band with this smoldering look or anything? Or was you know? No, no. That was a friend of mine. Was a photographer. I mean, yeah. startup photographer, and she needed. Wes, throw that back up again. Uh huh. Go that back there. there oh, is, yeah. oh. so a friend of mine was a photographer. That was filmed. That was shot in my home through the through the railings. Like uh, in front, you uh, can see the railings that are kind of yeah. blurry. Sure, uh, sure. I don't know whatever happened to it. I, I guess it was a portfolio piece for her. I said, sure, I'll do it. Um, my hair was never that spiky. She just kind of did my hair for. She had a certain angle she was looking for. So that's the thing. <laughs> like you say, yes, right? I, right, I, right. That's super well, awesome. You can take that down now. That's like that's like some Melrose Place stuff right there. Well, it's very kind of you to say. I felt super awkward and embarrassed doing it. Uh, definitely outside my comfort zone. But but that's the point, right? It's like yeah, that's the point. Well, my second question regarding that. So now we've got the hairstyle we've got now. Do you do you shave your own head, or does someone professionally do this for you, or what? Uh, it depends on time. Well, so now with COVID, like, yeah, right. Like yeah. we're in lockdown here in Toronto. It's so like, forget it. Um, my wife sometimes will do it. If I'm in a rush and it needs to look good, she'll do it. Uh, if, if I have a little more time, I'll do it, but I might miss some spots at the back or something. So it just depends on how much time I've got. Usually it's me just cause I, I like yeah. to be independent and just be in control. But, um, well, Wes, Wes, throw up that shirtless picture of Evan now, please. I'm kidding. He's looking. <laughs> okay, I'm like, where is it? <laughs> Listen, I, I accidentally did a show in my undershirt last week. <laughs> I did the Tony Robbins interview, and then I, I was so hot and sweating from doing it, just from being nervous and excited and everything. But then on my break, I, I took off the my sweatshirts, so like wool heavy kind of thing. Yeah. And then I had another interview right away, and I forgot to put the sweatshirt back on. And as soon as I come on stream, like, oh my god, I'm in my undershirt. <laughs> And then I thought, you know what? Let's go, right? right? Like, let's go. I'm sure that he would have been okay if I said, hey, can you give me like four seconds? But right. I don't want to be that guy who's just afraid. So I want to jump into the fear and do it anyway. Right. right. Evan, but, uh, Pre-COVID, how, much, how, many, uh, how many keynotes a year were you doing? How, how much were you traveling? Um, not quite half the month, but close. Wow. It was really picking up. Um end of end of end of 20 end of last year no i guess 2019 into 2020 now right because now we're in january right um, right i was away for like maybe three and a half straight months but then there was going to be a lull anyway my my speaking career was really picking up but whatever i mean again who cares i'm i'm speaking to you guys right i mean <laughs> right that's let's right. just forward right i mean we spend zero time thinking about what could have been and instead all the energy focused on where we're going. Yeah. Love it. Where, you know, we, we need to get in and talk about the book. And so maybe Wes can throw the link up for the book and, and I've, I've downloaded it and I, I walk every day and started listening to uh, built to serve. And I, you know, I love it. It's an easy listen. If that makes sense. Uh, we're not talking 30 minute chapters and it, it's, it, it's quick, you know, and it, I, I love it. And I wanted to kind of dig into who, the why, and the how, because there, it's so funny to me sometimes we, we read books like this that I don't want to use the word basic and because I, I don't want to degrade the book, but it's stuff we know, right? It's stuff, it's stuff we know, but we have to be just spoon-fed stuff. And to be spoon-fed, what's your who? You know, who are you doing this for, right? So can you, can you in like a – in a couple of seconds of each one, talk about the who and the why and the how and what those look like and how to get to them. Yeah. And I know we've only got like a minute left, but, um, better make it quick, super quick. Your who is your most important core value. So mine is believe everybody else will have their own. So figuring out what you stand for, that's going to be the roadmap for the rest of your life. Your why is probably the most important part and that's your purpose. And your purpose comes from your pain. You don't have to sit on, on top of a mountain for 10 years meditating or journaling or whatever to figure out your purpose. That's the number one question you ask. How do I find my purpose or my passion? Your purpose is to help people who currently are who you used to be. Yeah. Your purpose comes from your pain, period. That, that will, you'll love doing that for the rest of your life. Helping somebody who is the 19 version, 19 version of you, for me, will, will be forever. I'll be 120 as long as I can still use my, my head 
I'll still be spitting out the content to try to help 19 year old Evans of the world. Um, and then the how is how you do it. So that will yeah. change right now. You guys have this show. Amazing. Uh, you know, you're live streaming it five years ago would have been a different format in 10 years. These guys are going to be beaming into your living room through virtual reality and holograms, you know, like the, how will change with time, but the, but the, who is your most important core value? It's how you treat people. Yeah. Yeah. The, the why is why you do the thing to, to serve the people who currently are who you used to be. And then the how you execute will, and will change over time, but the who and the why stay constant. Well, the book is phenomenal. We know we just have a certain amount of time. I know you said your favorite movie is Seabiscuit. What's your second favorite movie? Um, I don't know. It's a good question. I watch Donnie Brasco a lot. I don't know where, really? where that comes from, but I watch that a lot. <laughs> now you have, you have a son, how old? 11. And so are you watching anything on Disney plus anything that, that jumps out that you're like, I've seen this a hundred times because of my son. Uh, no, we, he's more into Minecraft. So we do Minecraft. Oh, yeah. like we're building homes and, and creating villages and that's not really my game, but I do it. For him. League, League of Legends, right? Is that your game? I love League of Legends. He plays it for me, and I play Minecraft for him. Very nice. Well, I hey. got to tell, tell you, I watched one of your videos today, and you were interviewing someone, and the League of Legends is behind you guys, and you guys are playing and talking. <clears throat> I couldn't remember how to hit X or, or Y, whatever. You, That's quite a talent. That's quite a talent. It's fun. Yeah, we do live stream four days a week answering business questions while I play video games. So it's fine. <laughs> nice. Great. So Evan, before you get out of here, uh, two things. One, how can everyone get a hold of you? And two, what's in the future for you? To get a hold of me, I mean, if you want to pick up the book, Amazon is probably the easiest spot built to serve. Um, otherwise, wherever you're hanging out, I'm probably there. YouTube, Instagram, just look up Evan Carmichael, I'll be there. And what was the second question? What's in the future for you? Oh, um, this show, you know, I'm looking forward this to the is over. This is past tense now. But, but when's the replay coming out, right? We got to promote it on YouTube and, and let everybody know. It's um, live on YouTube. Yeah, I'm doing a lot more of the same. You know, I, I want to I want to have a bigger impact. I want to grow my channel. No book planned. I still love Built to Serve. Like, that's still the big message right now going forward. Um, a few secret projects that are in the works that I can't talk about quite yet but it's just us go ahead but stay tuned but stay we've tuned. got like two followers just go yeah, ahead go ahead it's coming it's coming you can um, get excited it. he's bouncing there he's getting excited <laughs> i'm on a trampoline too so that he helps. may take his hoodie off who knows yeah. so yeah, right the, the, the undershirt moment um, <laughs> i know you have yeah. to leave but i know i know you're an investor as well you probably invest in other businesses and stuff but if you ever come back i'd love to get your take on bitcoin I don't really have a take on Bitcoin. I don't. I don't invest in crypto. Um, not that it's good or bad. Uh, I think you have to stick to what you know. So I love. I love. I love YouTube. There it is. I love <laughs> entrepreneurs. Um, but I well, don't really on that for ten minutes. I I love it. Hey, he's that's talent there. Uh, I don't do real estate. I I barely do stocks. Uh, and so you have to stick to what you know. So crypto is definitely the future. Is it going to be Bitcoin or not? I don't know. But I also don't, I know enough to know that I don't want to know about that market. Yeah. I've got too many other things I have to worry about. It's like, what's my take on that football player? I don't know. I'm invested into esports. The same thing. There's so many opportunities that um, you pick your spots. The most dangerous thing to do is go buy Bitcoin because Evan Carmichael on YouTube said buy Bitcoin, right? right. Which is how a lot of people make the decisions. Like, oh, he said it was hot. So let's go and all, right. all in and buy. I'm going to mortgage my house and buy Bitcoin because Evan said to, right? Um, you have to be an expert at, at what you're doing. Um, Evan, what's your favorite pizza topping? Pepperoni. Like one topping? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, pepperoni. All right, cool. I think, cool. I think the, the Patriots, the Crafts, uh, are involved in the eSports League. I, I think they have something to do with it. I'm not really oh, sure. There's a lot of sports money, mostly basketball coming in. But there's a lot, a lot of sports money, yeah, in in esports for sure. Great. Well, Evan, we're gonna let you get out of here. We appreciate it. Uh, we should. We're in a, We're both. All three of us. Uh, Tim West and I are in a mastermind group with Joe Soto, and we saw you on his live with him. And so that's when I hit you up. And and so thank you for joining us. And um, Wes, can you before he gets out of here, can you put that picture up of him shirtless just one more time? Or there it is. Are we, oh, oh cigar. cigar. I didn't day. notice the cigar the first time around. There you go. <laughs> cool. Well, nice. Thanks for having me, guys, and give my regards to Joe. We will. Thanks. See you, Evan. Thank That's you. Much love.
See ya. Well, that was good. That was you know, there's some, some uh, you know, I, he in the book he talks about you know you find your purpose from your pain, and and that's uh, it's so right, and it's so you know, like I said, I don't like some of these books. You read them, and I listen to we listen to them, we read them, we talk about them, and it's so much basic stuff that we know. It's just we just need that kick in the ass sometimes to go do it or to think about it, you know? Right. As I've gotten to, to, to know him by reading a little bit about him and now listening to him live, um, he's a guy who did who did well, right? We all we all know that. And uh, But instead of out there searching for the ne next big deal, he, he, he's decided that, you know, he's going to help, like he said a couple of times, 19-year-old Evan not make the same mistakes uh, that he made and um, push them forward. I love it. I really do. Right, right. Hey, good stuff today. Next week, uh, we've got uh, Todd Collins on back on Tuesday. And Todd is, um, is a social media, digital social media guy. Um, really good. I, you know, he's really done really well on TikTok. He's smart. He's engaged. Uh, he works with a lot of restaurants, a lot of other businesses. Uh, super smart guy. We've got a lot of good guests coming up. We've got uh, Jesse Cole coming the savannah bananas coming up we've got who else we we've got um um what's his name i can't uh the eat your eat your lunch what's his name oh uh anthony anthony, I, yeah, anthony the guy that i can never pronounce the last name right so that i'm gonna have to figure we this need, out we need, uh, we need michelle we need michelle to pop on and uh, tell us how oh, to say sure. it correctly so. yeah for sure for sure well, anyway, I think that's all I've got. I'm trying to not lose my voice the rest of the day. So, as always, you know, it's fun to hang out with you. Wes, you want to jump on? You got anything to say? I have absolutely nothing to say except uh, it was a great uh, show having Evan on. And I think it's Anthony Inarino. Inner Inarino. In yeah. Thank I you, Wes. See, I yes. knew that he had – oh, his, be his beard is back too, by the way. Did you notice yes, that? Yes, it is. Ba bad Black Bart is in the house. Um, <laughs> I, you know, we're talking about the shirt. And, you know, Evan – I mean, you know, Wes is over like <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> It was ready. It was ready to go. And I'm just like, are you kidding me right now? But he loved it. So, you know, when I, when I said, hey, Evan, uh, we got a sh picture of you shirtless, he was instantly like <laughs> – He was looking up at the <laughs> – I thought I missed something. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just playing around. I did. I did have a note down to ask him uh, if he knew Britney Spears, but uh, <laughs> didn't get to it. So, wah, wah. Um, and a lot of people joined us today. Thank you for watching. Um, you guys got anything else? Nope. Just be safe out there. Yeah. Be incredible. See ya.